Basketball League champions, the Brisbane Bullets, clash with the Adelaide 36ers in the first grand final National Basketball League playoff. It'll be fairly fierce out there tonight. Of course, they've come good at the business end of the season and they've put together a couple of great games to end up here in the final. There were those who said they couldn't do it, but here's the tip-off and there they are. And the Bullets gain possession off the tip-off and it's very quickly down low to Sibley. So much rests on Leroy Loggins tonight. Sibley again. He drives. Big, big rebound from John Dodge. Does it drop? Yes. Now that's an important one, Gary, because uh, Johnny Dodge has got to get off to a good start. And it's important that uh, he does. And that was an excellent beginning for the Bullets. Brian Curl doesn't look too happy about all the streamers on the court. That wasn't actually supposed to happen. The streamers were supposed to go into the crowd, not onto the court. Replay, and that's a big rebound from Johnny Dodge. And it's one area of the Bullets game has been lacking in recent games, and that's offensive rebounds. Andrew, what sort of what sort of offense can we see from the Adelaide 36ers early on in the piece? Well, you'll see nothing different to what they've played all year. They have, they take this game as just any other game in the season, only they want revenge for last year. He does have a foul against his name early on in the piece. But the game was only a few seconds old, and the first intercept, the first steal came for the Bullets. And they take it underneath. And there's a foul called on Robert Sibley. As I said earlier, uh, they had a couple of games earlier in the year where they were only shooting 50% from the foul line, but their normal average would be about 85%, and that's about as good as you're going to get in the league. Well, Dave, the word is that the Fuller time's strong enough inside to stop the Adelaide 36ers. Yes, that's, that's really where the... Uh, difficulty becomes with the bullets in their matchup inside with the twin towers of uh, Jones and Davis in there and uh, that's why John Dodge has got to play a, a big part in tonight's game along with Larry Singstock they find Leroy inside turn around pop it in for two well, this boy's been uh, uh, had before with Adelaide when they've opened up with Ally on uh, Leroy, and uh, it, it isn't a, it isn't the matchup that uh, it'll work. But uh, they can bring off the bench Dwayne Nelson. The first three-pointer of the game for the Adelaide 36 is from Daryl Pierce, and the Bullets can't allow them the free outside shots. They've got enough trouble inside without allowing that outside. Of course, the Bullets have started without Cal Bruton. Cal Bruton's still on the bench. There's John Dodge again. He had the free shot, but it didn't drop. What an excellent pass from Davis. Top pass. Straight down to Al Green, who stuffed it through for two. And again, Al Green... Um, pretty rugged underneath there. Travel call. John Dodge got a hand of that and it's frenetic action here tonight and there's the foul called on number eight Peter Ally. Andrew you don't look impressed with that call. Well I saw one referee call the foul and the other call a jump ball and uh, Ray Hunt the gentleman who called the jump ball was uh, down in Adelaide last week but uh, oh well the guy who called the foul was first so the foul stays with Peter Ally. Hook jump shot from Leroy Loggins did not find the, the ring. Yeah, that was under a lot of pressure from Leroy. I think uh, both teams uh, have taken just a little time to settle down. This pace cannot uh, be travelled. There's another turnover from Adelaide, but they can't stay at the, sustain this pace, both teams. It's, it's a matter of which team settles in and starts working their offensive patterns, and I think you'll start to see that now. Seven to the Adelaide 36ers, four to the Brisbane Bullets. Nine minutes and 20 seconds left in the first quarter. John Dodge again with another rebound. And yet again, he doesn't manage to convert it. And that could tell. Well, I think the important thing with John Dodge there, uh, Gary, is he's got to take the ball at Davis and Jones, not try and shoot over the top of them. There's another two points to the Adelaide 36ers. They're certainly strong inside, Andrew. Yes, they are strong inside. Davis has got to be the strongest guy in the NBL. But I think the interesting matchup to watch is Ally and Leroy Loggins. You watch Ally run Loggins all over the court and actually try and physically abuse the guy and run him out of steam. Two points to Larry Sinstock. Bullet six. The 36 is mine. It's the first quarter, the first final. 
the National Basketball League final series for 1986. The Bullets a are replay in... of last year's grand final. The Bullets are an extended man to man, and uh, we can't afford those sort of uh, easy back doors from Darrell Pierce. An excellent pass then from Greg. 11 to the 36 is 6 to the Brisbane Bullets. And Ron Radliff brings the ball up. It's fairly physical inside underneath. It'll be interesting to see how the Bullets cope with it. Sensed off. Around. First one. Second one doesn't drop. And the Bullets players are struggling for everything. John George has the ball. Passes off to Sibley. Back to Ron Radliff and they'll settle the play down again. There's a couple of big second and third efforts from Larry Seamstock to get a hand on that ball. Leroy Loggins has it. The foul has called, a holding foul. For the bullet. And it's Sibley at the top of the key to Seamstock. John Dodge is inside. This time, perhaps, for John. In this early stages, it looks as though the Bullets are prepared to go with their game plan of putting that ball inside to Dorge. And I think that's uh, certainly the way to go and uh, put some pressure on the uh, defence of, uh, of Adelaide. Outside again. Three-point attempt. Does not go in. And Ron Radliff got a hand to that and flipped it back into Larry Senstock. Well, what do you think of the, the bullet so far, Andrew? Well, I'm impressed by them. They're, I read what they were going to do in the papers, and they are going to stick to that. I think they're looking for John, John Dawes a lot. If you watch Bill Jones, he doesn't really ever attempt to block his shot because I know the Adelaide camp hasn't got a real high opinion of his shooting. But, uh, again, well, they've, they've blocked that one from Sibley. But uh, I think you watch Bill Jones just not get into any foul trouble early and let Dawes take plenty of shots. The action is back with the Adelaide 36ers. And from way outside, the three-point attempt went astray. And the Bullets have possession. It's with Leroy Loggins. Six minutes and 27 seconds left. Loggins inside. Great pass to Sibley. Wonderful pass. 11 to the 36ers. 10 to the Brisbane Bullets. And I think you'll see most times that Leroy gets the ball, he'll take it straight at Peter Ally in an attempt to draw a foul and make it obvious for the referee to call. Shot went astray and the Bullets with possession again. First substitution called for the game and Cal Bruton comes in for the Bullets. Ron Radler takes a break. Probably a good substitution at this point, Dave. Well, that's uh, exactly at six minutes into the game and uh, Cal's the one who lifts the tempo of the Bullets and uh, really does give him some extra firepower out there. And immediately he shoots the ball. on Cal Bruton's shoulders. Andrew, do you think that the 36ers have a have a game plan for Cal Bruton? Yeah, the 36ers camp still believe that Bruton has a suspect ankle, and again, as I said with Leroy, they'll make Cal work very hard, make him go every which way. Three on two. Pass inside. Oh, John. He missed that. But again, it's Bruton with the ball. Off the glass. And the Bullets are in the lead, 14 to 11, with five minutes and 21 seconds left in the first quarter. And the Bullets are Well, finals them. basketball at its best, and there's another turnover. And again, it's Cal Bruton who comes away with the ball. He passes off to Samstock. He travelled. Bullets have scored the last eight points. ...and centre at Boondool. 11,000 people, the largest ever indoor crowd for a sports event in Australia. Packed in here tonight to see the battle between the 36ers and the Brisbane Bullets. The 36ers felt that they were robbed last year. They felt they shouldn't have lost. They didn't deserve to lose on the year's performance. And I'd imagine, Andrew, the same would go for this year. They've had a, they've had a great season. Yes, I, I was present at their team meeting at about 5 o'clock this evening, and uh, Ken Cole summed it up pretty easily. He said, we should win and we expect to win. Brisbane only hoped to win, and that was pretty much the feeling in the camp. Well, I think you can tell them they got that wrong. The Bullets are convinced that they're going to win here tonight. And Larry Senstock getting a hand of that and flicking it out of bounds. So the 36ers will regain position. They're going to have to stop players like Daryl Pierce getting those free outside shots. Yes, He's only made one of them so far. Now, that's, uh, that's probably the first uh, real attempt that they've made to go into their strength in Davis. Uh, Big Mark Davis has the ball, the two free shots. 
first one drops 14 12 four minutes and 39 seconds left in the first quarter what a wonderful game of basketball we're seeing here tonight now Chris McGraw has got a big job he's just taken over from John Dorge and uh, uh, Dorge has been a, a, an offensive threat for us Chris McGraw has got to continue that there's a blocking foul called on Danny Morsu Adelaide seems to have really got behind basketball again this year yes it's really taken off it's a pity we don't have uh, such a fantastic stadium like this at Burndall the Apollo Entertainment Centre only holds at the best three and a half thousand and when tickets went on sale for next Friday's game it sold out in uh, just under an hour so the game has taken off yes but uh, so too here in Brisbane judging by this crowd Chris McGraw is on for the Brisbane Bullets and once again the 36 has scored from outside without any pressure on them the Bullets are going to have to just exert a little more pressure if they want to fix that up McGraw to Sandstock from outside call that two points Big basket from Larry Seamstock outside. 16-15, the Bullets lead by one with three minutes and 41 seconds left in the first quarter. And there's a foul call this time on Chris McGraw. We're at the free throw line. We'll take a commercial break and bring you the action in just a moment. Oh, no point. The ball game is tied up at 16 apiece with 3 minutes and 25 seconds left in the first quarter. The Bullets needed to be with the Adelaide 36ers at the end of this first quarter. The Bullets have been suspect as a starting team a number of times. But this time, they're right up with the play. In fact, they lead 18-16. Right. Very, very important for Brian Curl to have his guys within striking distance at the end of the first quarter. The Bullets, of course, are very strong very strong third quarter team and there's a foul called on Chris McGraw let's see if Mackay can make it two from the free throw line first one drops without any trouble second one is all over the place and it's Leroy Loggins very smartly up the court holding the play back to Sandstock to Cal Bruton to more Sue to Sandstock again finds Cal Bruton. Cal Bruton has the shot tipped away from him. And it's the 36ers who come away with the ball. Cal Bruton giving it everything he possibly had to get a hand of that. Yes. Two minutes and 33 seconds left. The Brisbane Bullets lead the Adelaide 36ers by 18 points to 17. Entertainment Simmons and well-known faces. That's Ian Botham, the cricketer who's in Brisbane at the moment. And on the other side of the basketball court is Greg Chappell, the, the great Australian cricketer. And quite a few other well-known celebrities that are very interesting. Now Green and uh, Cal Bruton are having uh, a great battle out there along with the Davis and Singstock. The ball's on the ground and it's Larry Sengstock who tidies up for the Brisbane Bullets. Two minutes and 22 seconds left and the Bullets lead by one. To set to Leroy Loggins down low. Across to McGraw, who's free, shoots it up. It drops two points. An underrated shooter, Chris. Yes, and they tend uh, to leave him alone out there. Well, Bill Jones is prepared to let him take that shot. And well, we saw in the last quarter against Canberra uh, last week that uh, he hit a couple of those from the corner, and he's capable of that. Nice drive from Pirello, straight through the middle. Pirello. And Cal Bruton brings it up for the Bullets. Twenty plays, nineteen. McGraw. Looks inside, finds Sandstock. Sandstock waits and off the glass for two points. That move of Larry Sandstock's down low, he's one of the few players that is capable of getting the big men in the air like he does then. Three-pointer from way outside for Michael Mackay. And 22 apiece. Michael Mackay, Andrew, is quite capable of uh, blitzing anybody in, a, in any quarter. You have to give that guy's absolute brilliant. Uh, what he did earlier in the year, he had a really bad knee injury and he was off the scene for up to eight, ten weeks and he's come back. Like the guy's only 20 years old and can match him with, it, with anyone in the country and he really can turn a game around as we saw by that last three pointer and that one as well. Amazing stuff. Great shooting. A minute and seven left and now the Adelaide 36ers lead by two. And there's a holding foul call. This time on Mike McCoy. Yeah, for that charge. 
Senstock is off. Sibley is on. Loggins. 24 apiece. The ball game is tied. 24 all with 53 seconds left in the first quarter. Brian Kerr will be happy with the way things have developed. Bullets pressure everywhere. And there's a, there's a holding foul on Peter Alley. Seconds left. They'll look for one good shot. Sibley. Radliff on the baseline. Two points. 26 plays, 24. 27 seconds left. And the pressure is on. No basket. 26 plays, 24. The Bullets have it. 15 seconds left. They'll look for one good shot. <laughs> Logan says I'll have that. Fading away for that one. And then we'll get another one back. Oh, dear. Three shots in the space of seven seconds. Can you believe that, Andrew? Yeah, well, they had, they had everything going for them. They got a good call down there, and they made the, the, the shot. They had their second and last shot, and then... Having all that time, they really should have got, got an extra two points in the time they had available, I thought. Nelson hitting the floor for the first time for the Adelaide 36ers. Back with the action. The second quarter starts. The Brisbane Bullets and the Adelaide 36ers. And it's the Adelaide 36ers that start the scoring off in the second quarter. Two points to Bill Jones. 26 apiece. Cal Bruton always hovering. Shot from Robert Sibley didn't even hit the ring. And there's the, the big long pass down. Shooting stats for the first quarter. The bullets 54%, the 36 is 57%. But the ball game is tied up at 26 apiece. The bullets have nine rebounds and the 36 is have four. Does that stat surprise you, Andrew, for a team that's supposed to be so strong? Certainly does. The 36 is have rebounded very strongly all year, and particularly with Jones and Davis on the court with that amount of time to be out rebounded, that really is something good to go in Brisbane's well, favour for the rest of the game. Look at that, the 32nd clock was played to perfection there by the bullets and they take possession. Now, Great couple... stuff from the Brisbane Bullets. 26 apiece. The second quarter has just started. It's the National Basketball League on TVO. The action from the Entertainment Centre at Boondall. Loggins again. Two more. He's the man they're going to have to watch. But both Radliff and Cal Bruton are on the court at the moment. And does that cause troubles for the Bullets? Not as far as defence is concerned. Having two guys... Not quite so bad now because Ray Wood's on there. And... Uh... That gives, them, uh, that gives them a little bit of a chance. Ray Wood is one of the smaller guards. It'd be different if Ally or Mackay was on there. And once again, John Dodge had the opportunity to convert and make that. That was a relatively easy two points, or should have been. It was a wonderful pass. And John Dodge will not be happy with that. At the other, however, he makes amends with the rebound, only to have it taken out of his hands. But the jump ball. Now, a big man like him. Grab that important rebound. He should then open up that key one. <laughs> well, John, if it's there, I may as well grab it. Cal Bruton saw it coming, anticipated it quite as often as I thought they would. No, well, they've certainly got plenty of tall timber in there, but the problem is getting the ball in close enough. And uh, the Brisbane Bullets have done a superb defensive job so far. But once again, it was Cal Bruton who could see that Mark Davis was going to turn around and go for it and just got a hand to that. Great defense from the Brisbane Bullets. The best defensive team against the best offensive team. That's the way it was built last year. This year, of course, the Bullets have lost a few more games and they're not really up there as far as the defense is concerned. But tonight, they're, they're doing it in style. And that's another call that... A little, bit of the bullets way. a little bit of frustration in Mark Davis' play then. They've been trying to get the ball into him about three times. The Bullets' defense is collapsing to him and uh, putting a lot of pressure on that. It's with Leroy Loggins. The crowd is clapping. Calling for support to Bruton. Making space for himself. There's the shot. 
And the Adelaide 36 has come away with the ball. That is back in the hands of the Brisbane Bullets from outside Radliff. Sibley. Back out to Bruton. It doesn't drop. And it's the Adelaide 36ers who come away with the ball. Ray Wood. Yes, I think the Bullets should have made them pay for that turnover then. Davis. Inside. Free. Wow. What wonder, wonderful positioning from Bill Jones, and didn't he get up there, Andrew? A great rebound. He's a big boy at six foot nine, and he really can get off the ground because he's not all that heavy. Whereas Davis is completely built differently, but they both can get off the ground and a long way up. Robert Sibley to Cal Bruton. He finds himself in a position of having to shoot the thing. He goes right underneath. It makes a very nice looking two points. 30 apiece in the second quarter. You can't get it any closer than that. There's eight minutes and 33 seconds left in the second quarter. What a struggle this is turning out to be. Foul is called on Cal Bruton, a holding foul. From that, D Davis lucky to control that ball. Pierce. Jones. Every which way. They're all over the place. There's that strength of Adelaide inside. Davis and Jones competing on there with Nelson. And that's uh, probably the strongest front line in the National League. Well, this is decision time for the Bullets. They now trail by two points. With... When he's got somebody about his size on him, he's quite happy to go and take it at him and shoot over the top of him. And there's another foul called, and uh, <laughs> Leroy will go to the line. Tonight, I think the 36ers in both Ally and Nelson have done a pretty fair job because he's a 40 points a, a game player, and, you know, he's probably got 10 up his sleeve now. But I think they've done a fair job on him so far because he is so brilliant. Yes. With his second free throw, that drops. That ties the ball game up at 32 apiece. Leroy Loggins. Ray Wood for the Adelaide 36ers. Daryl Pierce, free as a bird. This time it's Ron Radliff. <laughs> it pulls down an amazing rebound. It ends up with Leroy Loggins, who passes off to Larry Sandstock. The foul is not called, and it's the Adelaide 36ers who race away with the ball. Larry making amends by getting a hand to it. The Bullets uh, in that sub matching up with Daryl Pierce, and uh, Danny certainly can't afford to give uh, Daryl those outside shots. Ray Wood. Dwayne Nelson. The Wood again. Finds himself free. Falling sideways and looking for air support and it still went in. Yes, that's not uh, characteristic of uh, Ray Wood shooting. He's, he's an excellent outside shooter. That's a holding foul this time. Mark Ball on both ways, and as, as I'm sure they will. There's a foul called on Leroy Lockers. Locking foul. Well, the refs seem to be doing a fair sort of a job at this stage. I mean, that can't, can't be easy in front of 11,000 people. There's so much at stake for both teams here tonight. Pressure is on. So I think the refs have done a, particular good, a particularly good job if you don't notice them at all. Bill Jones from about... 15, 16 feet out, just drove it through. And there, you see what happens when you lose the ball in the backcourt. Just two points goodbye. Yes, that's the ability from the Adelaide 36ers. Ray Wood looking after Ron Radliff. Senstock has the ball. It's to Danny Moore Sue. It's to Senstock again. Finds himself free. But again, it's the height of the Adelaide 36ers and the jumping ability of Bill Jones that sees the ball in the hand of Ray Wood. Shooting percentage, the 36ers have 62%, the Bullets 48% at this stage of the game. Rebounds are now tied at 12 apiece. The Bullets got off to a great start, but unfortunately didn't carry on the good work. And for some odd reason, Ray Wood was just allowed to stroll through the middle and get the rebound. And this is where the 36ers are so dangerous when they get the ball inside. But it, it, it uh, really the play that was made got Leroy's third foul, and that is the most significant part of, this, of that particular play. 
38 to the Adelaide 36ers, 32 to the Brisbane Bullets. Bit of crowd pressure, Andrew, starting to take its toll. I think it's probably starting to take its toll on Brisbane because they know that uh, this entire crowd is here to support them. And uh, wow. Adelaide, I think, once they're out on the court, they won't, they won't even hear them. Bill Jones was just so far above everybody else that time. Probably deserved more than two points. Senstock has the ball. He fakes. Up for two points. That's yeah. what he needs to continue doing. That's an excellent play, and there's nobody better in the National League uh, from an Australian point of view who can do that. Larry's uh, one of the best inside players that Australia's ever produced. And this time the foul is called on Larry. Bullets. That's his first foul in the game. Larry sometimes gets himself into foul trouble, and that affects his game, especially in the third quarter, but he's looking okay at the moment. Oh, what a top rebound. Big pass. Oh! That would have to be the play of the game so far, Dave. What a remarkable, a remarkable shot from Ronnie Radliff. I mean, Unbelievable. While he was in the air, he took that, and the pass was absolutely perfect from uh, Cal Bruton. What an absolutely wonderful... Watch this. Bruton. And there it is. Amazing. And in the meantime, the action has gone up the court again. And with five fouls against the 36ers as a team, the Bullets will go to the line and shoot one and one. Four minutes and 32 seconds left in the second quarter. So the 36ers are going to have to be careful now, Dave. Yes, I think, uh, as I said earlier, that the, their power inside was starting to tell. That foul came from Chris McGraw when he boxed out Bill Jones, and Jones went over the top of him, but made a lot of contact while doing it. 36 plays 40. The Adelaide 36ers lead the Brisbane Bullets by four points. Bullets pressure. Ray Wood with Cal Bruton. It goes outside. Morsu got a hand to that. Mark Davis shooting. And this time the foul is called on the sidelines the 36ers really should be getting away instead of giving away fouls that are costing them two points possibly every time they commit one well there's four points that they've just kissed goodbye they should not be missing free throws pressure from the brisbane bullets daryl pierce to mark davis well 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 well, that was it. Works at both ends, eh, Andrew? It certainly does. That was in front of Ray Hunt then, and uh, from our angle anyway, we, I thought uh, Chris McGraw did have a position that time. And once again, Larry Senstock is given the ball low, and he just plays that move and just makes two points. That should be... That's an identical move to what he just did, and uh, he, can, he can certainly do that many times. The Darryl Bullets Pierce. have got a lot of pressure on the... Uh, the outside shooters of uh, Daryl Pierce has not been open for uh, for most of this quarter, and uh, that's a good point on the second quarter. It'll send the 36ers to the line. That's what's happening now, Michael Mackay. And the difference at this stage is that for the 36ers, the ball is dropping. 44 plays 38. The Brisbane Bullets trail by six. Three minutes and ten seconds left in the second quarter. Gal Bruton to Morsu. Back to Bruton. And once again, it's with Senstock. McGraw. To Cal Bruton. He doesn't know what to do with it. And there you pay the price. An unbelievable layup missed by Michael Mackay. Well, they are telling layups and... Uh... It, uh, Coach Cole would have been very anxious to have seen that one drop. Bill Jones is just such a wonderful player. Man. Both ends of the court, he's just worth points every time he pulls down a rebound like that. That's a Brisbane bullet ball. Two minutes and 19 seconds left in the second quarter. Now, Gary, you remember the last game against Adelaide. Right at this point was very critical, and they opened a 10-point lead. Right at this point of the last game. 
for Morsu. His first shot. Bullets needed that one to drop. And it's the 36ers who come away with the ball again. In, uh, finals time and uh, I would think uh, Adelaide would be looking for Al Green to uh, to be at least a 20 point player in a, in a, in a finals game yeah I think uh, Al Green's game has changed a lot over the last two years he has become one of the most complete defensive players around and his answer to those people who continually tell him he can't play well in finals he all he does is tell them that at least I get there there are so many people who say that about him who have never made it so he usually has got an answer, but I think he's done a pretty good job on Ronnie Radliff so far. Well, you were saying a moment or two ago, Dave, that it was important that the Bullets kept it all together at this stage of the game because now there's that 10-point split that you were talking about. Yes, and exactly the same time in the last game against Adelaide. Well, Chris McGraw has done a couple of things in the last minute or so that's cost the bullets dearly not only do they not get the two points at their end but they're the 36ers are racing down the other end and they're scoring the two points and the crowd has become a lot quieter Davis again this 12 point split yeah, there's an two seconds left as Andrew said while Leroy was off the floor uh, it was critical for Adelaide to get that break and uh, it seems as though uh, they have, unless we can pull uh, a big three-pointer out. How's that? And that'll do. Is that okay? That'll do. It keeps us in touch. 32 seconds left. Bullets, 41. 36 is 50. There's nine points in it. Approaching half-time. Right underneath. Thanks very much, says Daryl Pierce. Well, you see, that's the. There's too much pressure on Larry Sengstock out there to come up with a rebound. We need uh, Chris McGraw in that case, Dave Nelson, and John Dorge in there picking up those offensive boards. There's five seconds left. Cal Bruton puts it up from way outside, and unbelievably, it doesn't drop for Chris McGraw underneath again. Well, it's half time in the ball game. It's the first final in the National Basketball League Grand Final. The sign says, go, Bullets, go, and they're certainly going to have to do it in the second half. The Brisbane Bullets can pull back an 11-point deficit, playing the number one team in the 1986 season of the National Basketball League, the Adelaide 36ers. And the ball drops back to Ron Radliff, and it's now in the hands of Cal Bruton. There's the first shot of the second half. And the Adelaide 36ers regain possession. 11,000 fans will be wishing the Bullets well. And it comes off John Dorch, hands to Ron Radliff. Shooting percentage in the first half, the 36 is shot 57%, the Bullets shot 48%. And the rebounds, the 36 is 21, the Brisbane Bullets 15. But you did mention, Andrew, that Ken Cole thought that Leroy Loggins would come out and start shooting, and it certainly looks like Ken Cole was right. Well, he certainly has the ability to change the course of the game, but so does this man with the ball now, Daryl Pierce. But he hasn't shot all that well tonight. Yeah, Leroy could come out here and do anything. Back down and uh, would have been a certain two points. Well, the Bullets have got to block those big guys out. They can't allow them in there. But I guess when you're talking about guys the size of of davis and jones you're talking about the big guys what a what a rebound that was but hey leroy logan's got a hand to that magic stuff from leroy that was a nice, two point save that was a nice gentle hand too from leroy he didn't try and uh and smack that out of the uh, hand of because he's in foul trouble well Le uh, larry sandstock asking the question was the ball coming down when that player got his hand to it and the ball comes to to Leroy Loggins, outside shot, two points. Whoa, is he fired up? 45 plays, 52. Bullets trail by seven. The ball's with Bill Jones, fading away. And again, it's with Leroy Loggins. Three on two. Bullets should score. And there's been some turnovers from both teams in this uh, third quarter as they both battle to try and establish themselves. Uh... Outside shot. 
Two points. Peter Alloy with a good two. That is Radlett for the Bullets now. John Dorge has it. Back outside to Radliff. That's the shot. Basket counts. Holding foul called. Daryl Pierce will have a sore head as a result of that. Yes, he gave uh, Daryl Pierce a closer look at the floor with that one. Didn't do anything to, uh, to his uh, shooting ability, though. And it's Cal Bruton that brings the ball up for the Bullets. 36ers lead the uh, Brisbane Bullets, 56-47. John Dodge to Cal Bruton. There's Leroy Loggins with the ball. And that's another two points. Well, Ken Cole was right, Andrew. Yes, Leroy's come out here. He's really fired up. That's the third basket he's made in just a couple of minutes. And he really is, I think, the only Brisbane player out there that can get the side back into the game. As he brings them back in, the others will lift. And you can see the commitment of the Brisbane Bullets now. It really has picked up. They're going for everything. And that's exactly the sort of desperation that Ken Cole was after from the 36ers. Scoreline reads, Brisbane Bullets 49, but the Adelaide 36ers have 56. And Fido Alley has played a very serviceable game. Uh, he's not only been a scoring threat, but he's uh, put a lot of muscle on Leroy, and uh, it's only really been in this early stages of the third quarter that Leroy really has got on top. Bullets will be looking for a couple of three-point plays. It's with Cal Bruton. Back to Larry Senstock. To Bruton, inside to Dorge. He puts the shot up, but he has it pulled away from him. And again, the Adelaide this is where come away with the ball. This is where Green is very dangerous in open court on a fast break. <laughs> Could have had himself a quiet drink while he was there. Mark Davis outside to Daryl Pierce. Uh, once again, the Bullets perhaps just a suggestion over enthusiastic. Well, Brian Curl said to uh, just chip away at this uh, lead and not try and score too early, too quickly. Great pass to the far side. 60 points to the Adelaide 36ers, and the Brisbane Bullets have just 49. Bill Jones done a great job to get a hold of that pass, too. Actually, I think Leroy was lucky he didn't pick up his fourth foul, too, as he uh, contested that pass, too. the bonus. Andrew with uh, Peter Eli on four fouls and looking after Leroy Loggins. That puts him in a, an unenviable position. Yes, I think uh, Ken would be a little concerned that Eli is on four, but he still does have Dwayne Nelson on the bench and Dwayne can take over from Peter and he's done it before in the season and done it most serviceably. Here we go again. Oh, dear. Well, luck, luck favouring the Adelaide 36ers. Straight into the hands of Mark Davis, who just stuffs it through for two. And there's a foul called, and Cal Bruton drawing the foul nicely. Besides it with that drive. Well, the next three or four minutes, absolutely crucial, and Andrew, to the Brisbane Bullets. If they go further behind now, that could just about be the ball game. Yes, I think the 36ers are putting quite a good deal of pressure on them. And it's up to the Bullets to, to keep up with them. And as we saw in the last bit of the second quarter, they just fell away and the 36ers really did take the ascendancy. And Brisbane have to stay with them as well as whittle away that lead. Larry Sandstock doing the work. And the Bullets with Ron Radliff come away with the ball. Dave Nelson, his first shot. Three-pointer. 62. Let's see if that fires the Brisbane Bullets defense up. If ever they needed to stop the 36ers from scoring, it's right now. Now what Dave Nelson's doing, he's just been pinned for it, but he's been putting some body on Bill Jones inside. Fresher basketball from both sides here. It's the National Basketball League final on TVO. The game, the Brisbane Bullets, the Adelaide 36ers. Darrell Pierce with another great two points. Dave Nelson. 
Radler free from outside. Dave Nelson has the ball underneath. But possession going the way of the Adelaide 36ers. Leroy Loggins can't believe it. This is a very crucial part of the game, I feel, uh, Gary. He travelled. Maybe Cal Brook is starting to have an effect, Andrew. Yes, I think Cal's done quite well. He is a, a one hell of a playmaker, and he's starting to put some pressure on, on the 36ers, and he, he is intimidating the 36ers, and you can see there he got the call to travel on Al Green. He is having an effect. It's to Leroy. Oh. Is that man magic? Or is that man magic? I don't think he's missed one in the second half as yet. Certainly been in good touch. There's a pushing foul oh, tonight. The refs have done a remarkable job because they know it is a grand final. There's extra pressure out there, extra body, and they're calling it as such. The ally from outside. Full of players all over the place. There's Larry on those uh, re defensive boards again, and uh, he needs some assistance out there. Well, I think the Bullets are doing okay, considering their lack of size. There's another foul on Dave Nelson. Adelaide, he's a professional runner. He's won uh, the Bay of Shepherd, which is our top professional running race. And he really is an out-and-out competitor, and uh, he will give as good as he gets. Cal Bruton. Bruton drawing the foul. It's called on Bill Jones. Bill Jones the second foul. The foul will go to the scoreline. Read 64 to Adelaide, 59 to the Bullets. Sure. Making sure it drops, but doing it the heart-stopping way. 60 plays 64. 61 plays 64. The Bullets have a reputation, Dave, of being a third-quarter basketball team. It looks like the, that reputation has some, has some merit. Yes. They're pulling back the points. What do they need to do to continue? Well, I think the pressure that Cal Bruton's putting on their guards with Leroy's has been great. And Larry's been excellent on the boards. You just saw on replay the effort that goes into Cal Bruton's game. And fortunately for Cal, the shots didn't go. Oh, magic basketball here. Everybody's after the ball. Leroy Loggins has it at the moment. Great pass to Ron Radliff, who's on the base. What a three-point shot that was. The ball game is tied up. The bullets have pulled back 11 points. What's the pass to Leroy Loggins? There it is for Radliff on the baseline. Three points. Don't, under don't underestimate the job that Dave Nelson's is doing on uh, Bill Jones in there. He's making it very difficult for Jones to get open inside that keyway. Send stop. Looks for and finds Cal Bruton. Cal sets the player. He shoots from outside. Doesn't drop. And Mark Davis is there about three feet above everybody else and pulls out the rebound. Hard-stopping stuff, Andrew. Oh, yeah, it's been a tremendous game. It's been pressure all the way. We've seen a lot of errors, a lot of turnovers, and there we see another one. The 33. 66 to the Adelaide 36ers, 64 to the Brisbane Bullets. Dwayne Nelson in the ball game now. Mark Davis. Darrell Pierce. Wood. Back to Pierce. To Davis on the outside. Dwayne Nelson, first touch of the ball, and the basket does not drop. But it goes off his foot, and the Bullets will bring the ball back up the court. 64 plays 66. The Bullets trail by two. At half time, they trail by 11. Darrell Pierce is one from eight in this, uh, this uh, third quarter. There's a foul. Uh, three pronged attack uh, on the board now. Larry, uh, Leroy Loggins very very cleverly just drawing the foul there the experience of the man has he improved a lot Andrew since he played that 65 plays 66 yes. it's the third quarter there's a point in it yes uh, Leroy would have to be uh, the best player in the NBA he has not missed the basket in the second half 
and it's Cal Bruton and Ray Wood again. The battle at the top of the key continues. I wouldn't at all be surprised if Ken Cole calls a timeout very shortly just to, cut to stop him. Well, it was as much the same as he said before the match to play his left side. Leroy Loggins, if he does have a fault, it's that he goes left all the time. But unfortunately, Ally, he's on his fourth foul. And if you look up at this foul line, you'll also see Dwayne Nelson on four fouls as well. So if, in fact, the 36ers get into further foul trouble, Leroy can take this game by the scruff of the neck as he's done in this opening part of the second half and just take it home for Brisbane. Sense off. Loggins again at the top of the key. Another shot. Another two points. They'll be calling him St. Leroy in Brisbane before too long. Yes, just as importantly, uh, Larry's on four fouls for the Bullets, and uh, his strength on the boards has been uh, a great assistance to the Bullets uh, in tonight's game. To lose him would be uh, also difficult. Bullets come away with the ball. Ron Radliff to Dave Nelson from outside. He likes that. Three points. And the Bullets lead the Adelaide 36ers 71-68. Well, finals basketball is different basketball. And the Bullets not disappointing their fans here this, this evening. There's another foul call. Dave Nelson cuts. There's the shot off the ring. And the Adelaide 36ers just put a little more into that, realising that they now trail by three points. Come from an 11-point deficit at half-time to be leading by three. Could be four. No, the shot is missed, but they're going to get a free one. But uh, Brisbane, I take it, played an outstanding last quarter in Canberra last weekend, and today they're making it the third quarter. Well, their third quarter last week against Canberra was, was an absolute ripper as well. What is Dave Nelson doing? The ball is everywhere. But ends up with the Adelaide 36ers. Two minutes and four seconds left. Bullets lead 71-68. Pressure, pressure. Finals basketball at its best, and you can see now why basketball has become such a great spectator sport in Australia. Two great points for Mark Davis. Scoreline reads 71 to the Bullets, 70 to the Adelaide 36ers. Dave Nelson's had a great bearing on this game. It's been wonderful. Dave, look at that. Yes. Leroy Loggins missed him, the basket. Dave Nelson was there for the rebound and the two points. 73 plays 70. Pressure in the backcourt. From outside. Doesn't drop. Pressure again. Bill Jones up there. Two points. And the Bullets come away with the ball after the Adelaide 36ers have scored. Cal Brute way outside. Well, we needed just to run that clock down a little bit then. Get a better shot than that, and uh, importantly, uh, Dave Nelson's made a great contribution in this third quarter, both on the boards and uh, from his outside shooting. Let's see what happens here with 51 seconds to go. Yes, it drops for the Adelaide 36ers. There's that mismatch with Bruton and uh, Green underneath, and they found Green quickly. 73 to the Brisbane Bullets. Adelaide 36ers have 74. Tom Gerhardt sets the pick. Leroy Loggins from way outside. And unfortunately for the Bullets, it does not drop. And the 36ers will come down and look for one good shot. 18 seconds. 15 seconds. It's with Jones. Look out for the drive, guys. One on one. The first one drops. 75 to Adelaide, 73 to the Bullets. Well, as Jones is, uh, that's his first uh, foul shot tonight. It's man, two from, he's two from four now. And the clock starts counting down till the end of the third quarter. Seven seconds left. Uh, Ronnie will be looking, uh, or Dave Nelson, for a three-pointer. Dave Nelson. And there's the hooter for three-quarter time. And at three-quarter time, the Adelaide 36ers lead the Brisbane Bullets by three points. Start the fourth and final quarter of this, the this first of the finals. The Bullets have had a, a rocky, treacherous road to the, to the finals. The, the critics said they couldn't do it, but here they are. Shooting percentage. 
The Bullets have 52%. The Adelaide 36s, 55%. The final quarter, 76 to 75. Bill Jones. And as they rebound for the ball underneath, you can see that the 36ers have the strength. Um, powers that ball back up, and uh, he's been drawing a lot of fouls in there, and obviously now both the big men of uh, the Bullets are in foul trouble. And the second free throw falls. And the 36ers lead by three points. 78 plays 75. Loggins. The score by quarters. The Bullets 26 24 at the end of the first quarter. 41 52. They trailed at the second. At the end of the third, they trailed by 3 73 76. And the scoreline with 11 minutes and 6 seconds left in the ball game reads 78 to the 36ers. 75 to the Bullets. And possession is with the Adelaide 36ers. Mark Davis, can he add another two points to the game? Yes. Yes, it wasn't uh, a great uh, drop for the Bullets. It's, it was not a great shot from Davis, but it fell in. And he's, uh, he's got Ali. Peter Ali. That's the end of the game for Peter. You saw it again on replay. Andrew, was uh, Leroy looking for that? Well, I think he's got to, just as Peter Allo was looking to draw one on Leroy. In the third quarter, let's see what happens now. And the new player on Leroy, how good is he? Mike Mackay, a very good player. A young player. This will really be the biggest test of his career, I think. He played here last year and lost, and he, it really did hit young Mike very minutes. And the matchup that uh, Mike Mackay had last uh, year, Andrew, was Leroy Loggins. And it's a, it's a tough job for him. He hasn't got quickness, and he was... Uh, he may have drawn a foul there. He did, and that may be a very important call. And without sounding too parochial, I think that is a touch of justice for the last one called on Peter Ally. And Mackay has the shot and the two points. And the 36 bench is yahooing. 82 plays 75. The Bullets are going to need right here to come right back into this game. Holding foul called. This time on McCoy. Get uh, Larry back in there now, even though he's on four fouls. Dave Nelson tries to draw the foul. Ah, oh, wonderful stuff. What a game he's had. That's the value of going after your own shot. And uh, Dave Nelson is always conscious of that in his game. Well, he's had a fairly ho-hum sort of a season, Dave, but what a time to come right. Way outside shot. Where are the rebounders for the Brisbane Bullets? There's the shot, and it comes into the hands of Ron Radley. I think there was a bit of shuffling going on under the basket. The referee's here not to take a look at. Think so. Pressure from the Brisbane Bullets. Watch it in replay. This is where... Ron Radliff is so strong. Well, you can't leave Davis uncontested there. Well, Larry did the right thing and just moved out of the way as fast as he possibly could. 84 plays 79. There's five points in it. L Loggins to Dave Nelson. To Cal Bruton. He shoots. It drops. Well, this game's got everything, Andrew. It's, it's basket for basket, and it's just who can sustain hitting almost 100% now because every shot is just so vital. There's only just over eight minutes to go, and whoever misses the most shots is going to lose this game. Great drive by Davis. Defensively, um, as Andrew said, uh, you can't consider the first final. The Adelaide 36ers on paper would look to be the stronger team. They've had a great season, losing just two games. Both those games by just a point or two. The Bullets have had injury problems. And they've had games which they'd rather forget. But they're in the finals as well. Well, that's Cal Bruton out of the game temporarily. And uh, with that ankle. And uh, he, he copped the full brunt of Davis landing on that. Since, uh, 
think, Dave, that they'll probably go to Leroy a lot more in the last five minutes. Well, there's no doubt. There's no other player on the floor there that's got the capabilities of Loggins to win a game. Dave, Davis will be very important for Adelaide. Fouls and eight minutes left. Down low to Mackay. Great two points. I think the Bullets will be trying to isolate uh, Leroy and, uh, and Mike uh, Mackay in there. They find Leroy now. Leroy's pretty confident he can take him. And there it is again. The basket count. I'm pretty sure that Ken Cole just had a word in Al Green's ear, and I think it'll be, as Dave said, to see Al Green take Leroy. And do you think that uh, Al Green can handle Leroy Loggins? Well, he certainly has the pace to go with him. Uh, Leroy's probably got an inch on him, uh, but I don't think uh, they're mismatched in the skill department. Pressure. And Larry Sandstock missed the easy one. Yes. That, that could almost cost Brisbane a ball game. Don't say that, Andrew, because a couple of years ago, Larry still feels that I think, in some way responsible for a bullet's loss. Here we go again. Danny Morsu. Great pass inside to, to Jones. Who missed. Not the second time, though. Yeah, Jones was back up after that ball again. Danny Morsu. And Green has picked up Loggins. Round the other side with two points. Mikey plays 88. Mike Mackay picked up Danny Morsu and got scored on so. Mike Mackay's uh, got to lift his game defensively for Adelaide. Loggins stopping Mackay. And Bill Jones has the ball. Dave Nelson's looking after Bill. There's the ball. It falls free for Mackay. He gets the free shot and makes the two points. It'll be awfully hard to beat. Andrew with six minutes and 44 seconds to go. Have you ever seen the famous wave? Well, I've, I've seen it before, but I've never seen it in Australia. And... Uh, Watching the court commentator Gene, the crowd before the game really was something outstanding. And uh, watch it as it goes around. Here it comes in front of our cameras. We were practicing it before the game, Andrew. You can see that we've got it right. Well, I'm starting to feel relatively sorry for organizations like the VFL. <laughs> well, the mushroom has got to be congratulated. He's got that wave, and, and what a night to get it. Back to the action now on the court, and it's the Bullets with the ball. Leroy Loggins, hook shot. Two plays 90. <laughs> Davis, he'll drive straight into. Oh, and he's straight got, this time. He's got Larry Sengstock into Cal Bruton. And for some unbelievable reason, the foul ends up on Larry Sengstock. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got into trouble for caning them last week, so I'll say very little tonight. Okay, let's go back to the action. This is Cal Bruton at the top of the key. He's looking, looking for Leroy Loggins. Dave Nelson sets the block for Cal Bruton. Cal Bruton finds himself in trouble. Back out to Dave Nelson. He makes the two points. 94 plays, 92. There's still just one basket in it. And there's five minutes and 45 seconds left. Well, for those who said that this was going to be a slaughter, and at the 36ers, we're just going to walk away with this year's final. Well, they will be thinking again, as the Bullets have certainly shown the critics tonight, that they can do it and they can mix it in this company. And that's the danger for Brisbane just then. With Larry out of the game, Davis just took control of that board then and scored at will. Radler from outside. Three points. 96 plays, 95. The team that's on there at the moment. There's, uh, there's five players that can hit that three-pointer. Mark Davis inside again for two. The Bullets will need to come back with strength. It's with Leroy Loggins. Well, if ever a man can do it, he can do it for them. There's the foul called, and Leroy will go to the line. I think the important thing here is the... The combination that uh, Brian Curl has on the floor is a very offensive unit as well. And uh, the outside shooting ability of those five players will be an important 
factor against the strength inside, and that's what he's had to uh, compensate for, the strength inside of the Adelaide 36ers. Well, Mark Davis has 33 points, 13 from 19, which is 68%, and he's hit six out of six in this quarter. Bruton, all over the place. Two points. That's the one that comes up with a big defensive play that uh, could take the initiative in this last four minutes. Andrew, I think you hit the nail on the head before when you said it was the team that wanted to win that was going to win this game. That's right, and just taking on from what Dave said, the first team that misses, if that miss turns into a four-point swing, it could be the ball game. Morsu. He finds Leroy. This that time could it doesn't be happen. It. That could have been a big play. But there's still a lot of, lot of basketball left in this set. Here's the steal. Three minutes left. Yes. They're on their feet. Kunda will never be the same. And at the other end, here's the boards again. Another two points to the Adelaide 36ers. It's just 104 to the 36ers, 102 to the Bullets. It's just a small team of Brisbane team have got out there, but they're a, they're a very scoring, uh, heavy scoring team. Nelson on the baseline. Drop. Morsu has the rebound. And the foul is called on Mark Davis. And Danny Morsu will go to the line to shoot two. 104 plays 102. Oh. The pain of 11,000 people letting their breath out as Morsu misses the first. Second one drops. And uh, Brian Curl has thrown Robert Sibley in now to try and get some uh, boards for uh, Brisbane because it was so obvious that all the scoring was coming from inside the keyway in Adelaide. Yeah, probably a good substitution. Mike Mackay has the ball. The crowd is yelling, defense. The foul is called pushing foul. First one drops. The other factor to consider is that that Brisbane bullet combination out there at the moment is getting a little tired and they have to do a lot of jumping and they have to be pinpoint accuracy with their outside shooting. 106 and, uh, that, that could be in three. Do you think, Dave, they'll go for more three-pointers in this stage? Well, I think they'll just wait for their opportunities to isolate each other because the individual players bullets that combination on there and uh, Adelaide just can't match up defensively to stop that basket 106 plays 105 that's outside to Mackay Leroy got a hand of that two minutes and 14 seconds left 106 plays 105 and the 36ers are looking to score there's the shot that didn't happen and Cal Bruton has the ball He's going to go all the way. Oh, that should be two points. Yes. Go, Bullets, go. That's a big play. One minute 55 left. The Bullets take the lead. 107, 106. I think, I think the Bullets can hang on from here. This is going to be a tight one down to the wire. I think the, the offensive brilliance of the Bullets now will hold them out in this uh, less than two minutes to pass the ball. The crowd is yelling. First one drops. The ball game is tied up with a minute and 48 seconds left. I mean, simply foul shots. There'll be a few foul shots in this next two minutes. Those are the sorts of things that could win and lose games. There's that rebound of uh, Bill Jones. 109 plays 107. Bullets trail by two. Cal Bruton has the ball. Leroy has the ball. The bucket has the ball. Oh, 109 apiece. And there's a minute 24 left. Well, if Brisbane get out of this, they really do have to thank Leroy, don't they? Yes. But 111 plays 109. I've never seen a finals game yet that Leroy Loggins has not performed in. He's a great pressure player. 
And that's why I think the odds are still with the Bullets with him, whatever he's on the court. A lot of heavy work going on in under the key. There's another foul called. The man's magic is left. 110 to the Bullets, 111 to the 36ers. We're in my heart pills. Oh dear. Well, we could be even looking at an extra five by going to overtime at this, this strength. Let's see what happens now. 52 seconds left, and it is all go. Well, I think Adelaide need to score this time down. Robert Sibley just hurtled across the Adelaide 36's bench there. So I didn't mean it. No, he smacked somebody in the face with his boot. Pressure stuff. Certainly accidental. Oh, dear. Let's see what's going to happen here. There's 44 seconds left. They'll be looking for him inside. No fouls, guys. Leroy Logan's got a hand to that. 39 seconds left. There's that man making a big play then. That was a certain two points again from Jones. Well, the Bullets have better watch it now. Mackay has the ball. He drives. He shoots. It doesn't drop. It's in the hands of Cal Bruton. 25 seconds left. Well, the Bullets just need to play the clock down. One shot with five seconds left. And provided that shot drops, it is all over. And Leroy will take yes. it. Yes. No! No, no, no! That's a big call, and that's uh, Leroy out of the game. Watch it again. Leroy has the ball, and the foul is called. Well, the foul is called on Leroy for charging. Look at Bill Jones' feet stationary, or did they move? I think people watching at home have to make up their mind for that. Well, a timeout has been called. There is 13 seconds left in the game. The scoreline reads 111 to the Bullets, 111 to the 36. Back to the action, there's 13 seconds left. It still could go into overtime. There's eight seconds left. Still could go into there's overtime this game. Left. And that's it. It's overtime. There's the shot. It's overtime. Overtime time. Can the Brisbane Bullets hold out the might of the Adelaide 36ers? And the ball ends up in the hands of the Adelaide 36ers. Can the Bullets pressure hold out? There's the first outside shot. It doesn't drop. And Ron Radliff has the ball after pulling the rebound down. Gives you a surprise to see it in his hands. It's to Sibley. It's to Morsu, to Dave Nelson. There's some experience out there still. Radliff. Yes! 113-111. Bullets by two. Al Green. Pierce. Yes. Davis is going to operate, operate against uh, young Robert Sibley and uh, Cal Bruton came off to help out there. Yes! Charging foul. But the basket counts. No, basket does not count. Cal Bruton's, those two points off. Cal Bruton's been looking for that charge on uh, Davis now. It's the third time he's attempted it, and he's finally got one. 113 plays 111. If the Bullets could score a three-pointer here, that would really do their confidence a world of good. More Sue. This time the foul is on Cal Green. It doesn't drop. But the 36 is regained possession. Davis. Yes, inside to, to Al Green, who just rolls it in for two. Yes, yeah, so that's Al Green's strength on Ronnie Radliff then. He can't match him inside there. 113 apiece. Dave Nelson. 
There's a foul called on Mackay. Dave Nelson will go to the line. Decision is final and no correspondence will be entered into. It drops. 114 to 113. Three minutes and 29 seconds left. Bullets by one. Bullets by two. It always gives the side trailing by two the disadvantage. They, they have to score just to make up the leeway rather than get in front each time. Nice pass in the Pierce, though, and it's not a very good foul by Radliff, but uh, he is a class player. I mean, he does play in the Australian team, and you really wouldn't expect him to miss from the foul line. Touch wood. 115 apiece, three minutes and 17 seconds left. An extra time. The first final in the National Basketball League final for 1986. Radliff draws the foul this time. No slouch. Watch this in replay. He knew exactly what he was doing there. And from the free throw line, he's okay. Now, I think, I think uh, Ken Cole has brought uh, Ray Wood on, who's a, a defensive specialist, really. And he's brought him on to try and contain uh, Radliff in, in this situation um, and stop that sort of penetration. Three minutes left. The Bullets still lead by two. Simply on Mark Davis. He travelled. Here's an opportunity for the, for the Bullets to stretch that lead to four. More soon. He waits. Sibley. To Radliff. To Nelson. Outside. That's his shot. That's two points. 119 to 115. Two minutes and 34 seconds left. 18 foul on Dave Mel is the most important two minutes and 28 seconds for John. First one drops. 116 plays 119. The bullets by three. It's crucial for Adelaide for Bill Jones to make the second one, or if not for Davis to pull a rebound and score off it. They really don't want to be any further down. One to come. The ref says John Dorge left a fraction too soon. Well, the Bullets got the advantage of one of those calls earlier, and now Adelaide have got the advantage. I don't agree with the rule, but uh, they have critical times. <laughs> 117 plays 119. The Bullets have the ball. They lead by two. Radliff. More soon. To John Dorch. He has the ball inside. Has it smacked away. Well, here's a mismatch. Is race up here's court. a mismatch, and Bruton done a great job then to contain that. Two two. Mackay. Pressure all the way. Pierce. Where to pass to? No one's moving. Bill Jones with the shot that drops. 119 apiece, a minute 46 left. It's a big basket from Jones outside there really played like the captain he should all year Bill Jones has led by example every game this season and he's such a cool customer while he's doing it more Sue well, that was a roughie now there's been a couple of undisciplined shots from bullets then and uh, that's allowed uh, the Adelaide 36 is to get some uh, uncontested rebounds yeah that wasn't necessary and there's another foul there's call the Robert Sibley the Kai hasn't for a while so uh, extra pressure there it drops 120 to 36 is sneak into the lead they have the lead by two there's a minute 17 left and ron radliff brings the ball up the bullets trail by two they need these two desperately now who draws the next foul more soon drop and right there, I think, well, I would I'm like not going to say that again. <laughs> I, I would like to see uh, Cal Bruton and Ron Radliff be taking some of those clutch plays. They haven't shot the last three times down the, the court. It's gone to Danny and uh, John Dorge, and uh, that's tough in there. 
that the moment Ronnie Radliff stopped dribbling the ball, I thought Brisbane was in trouble because he really had no one capable to give it to who could guarantee a two-point basket. 42 seconds left. And that's, that's a, a big basket. Point. And Jones is in there. And they'll run the clock down now. 33 seconds left. Mackay to Pierce. Now the Bullets are going to come up with a steal. Foul line, Dave. Well, Watch it again. There. And the foul is called right there. This is still clutch. This is still clutch stuff. And he missed it. 24 seconds left. The three-pointer for the Bullets. And uh, we'll the, bullets the, victory. Are, the Bullets are gonna, they're gonna go for it. It didn't drop. And I thought we may have waited a little longer for that. They're running a look after the ball now. Backcourt violation, four seconds left, the Bullets have the ball. Timeout. Okay, now here's an interesting point. Adelaide will really be looking uh, to stop any three-pointers. There's 4.4 seconds left, the Bullets trail by two. Here we go now. They need to score within four seconds. The clock doesn't start until the ball is in play and they've blown it. A turnover. A turnover. And, and that is the ball game. Ron Radliff can't believe it. He's run into the dressing room. The Bullets have lost by just two points in extra time. But what a fantastic game of basketball we've seen here. And don't for one minute think that the Adelaide 36ers have got this final sewn up. Gary, that... Uh that absolutely great performance from there uh, from uh, brisbane bullets adelaide 36 has deserved that win towards the end but uh, what a what a great performance from the brisbane bullets they have of course the two free shots from the intentional foul as the full-time hooter ran rang and all alone out there ray wood sinks one from two so the score line reads 122 to the adelaide 36s 119 to the brisbane bullets well, it's never easy talking with the losing coach, especially with that coach is Brian Curl, because if there's one man who does not like to lose, it's Brian. And after a game like this one, Brian, it must be even more disappointing. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. I thought we gave it away. We had the game a couple of times there. We, uh, in regulation time, we set up a special play, and Lira got called for the charge. And uh, even in the extra time, we set up for a play, and uh, just didn't work out for us. And uh, so I'm disappointed in that fact, especially four points up in extra time, and uh, we just didn't uh, finish them off. But for all those people who said that the Adelaide 36ers were going to wipe the bullets off the court tonight, it must be a positive thing. Yeah, well, I uh, don't take much notice of those sort of people because I don't think they know too much about the game because when it comes to a grand final, it, uh, it's a whole new chemistry out there and it's a lot of different situation. And uh, my guys now have to uh, come back the hard way. We've got here the hard way and I'm sure that uh, we can uh, beat them down there two, two times uh, to, to win the title. And uh, I'm quite confident about that. And like I said to the guys after the game, there's just a few areas where we let ourselves down and we also had a couple of players that didn't really contribute too much tonight. Well, I guess it's a little bit like the America's Cup now. Yeah, well, I'd like to think it's uh, America's Cup, yeah. It, I, I don't know. It's We've got to come from behind, but I, I, like I said, I, I'm sure we can do it, and uh, we'll just have to work harder this week at training and uh, and just uh, just show people. Well, I told the guys before the game, if you want respect, you've got to go out there and earn it. And uh, we earn a lot of respect tonight, but if we want complete respect from everybody in the nation, we have to go and win the next two games. And is that possible? Well, I'm sure it is. I, I haven't any doubts it's possible. I, like I said, I thought tonight we'd win by 8 or 10 points. And when you look at that scoreline, we still had a chance to win by 8 or 10 points. They're very strong inside. If I can get John Dorge and Chris McGraw working harder inside and contributing in there for me, well, then, yes, we can do it. Coach of the Brisbane Bullets, Brian Curl. Let's go now and speak with Ken Cole. And with Ken is Dave Claxton. Well, I have with me a jubilant Ken Cole, coach of the Adelaide 36ers. Ken, uh, tonight a, a magnificent game of basketball by both teams, and really basketball was the winner tonight. Well, I'm, I'm sure it was, and uh, we felt pretty happy about coming in and playing in front of 12,000 people like this. And to, uh, after some of the Australian rules finals lately that have been blowouts, it was terrific to have a really close game. Ken, uh, you'd be very happy with the inside game of uh, Davis and Jones again tonight. 
Yes, and I think we got a strong contribution really all around. Mackay made one or two real clutch buckets when the money was on the line, and uh, everybody came through fairly well again. It was just another good, solid team effort. And uh, obviously now we take this uh, series down to Adelaide, and uh, next Friday night it's uh, another final in Adelaide. And obviously, from your point of view, any changes to the game plan as to, from tonight? Uh, we haven't changed all year. The, the whole plan is to win. And uh, so far, when we get people back in our own backyard, well, we'll just try and nail it down if we can next Friday night. I think it's going to be a very interesting game. Well, all the best uh, in uh, Adelaide. And uh, if it's a game like it was tonight, then obviously the Adelaide fans are in for a great game of basketball. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, David. And uh, now to Tony Ryan.